let's look back at your fight from yep. two weeks ago against Scott Sigmund. Finally got seven rounds in, your first fight with Robert, yeah. you only had two. How did you feel during that fight? Take me round by round. I felt really good in that fight. And, um, you know, I, I, some people say we shouldn't have fought on the inside, but I was enjoying it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, my conditioning felt good. Uh, I, you know, the eighth round, I was stronger than ever, or seventh round. Um, but uh, the Sigma fight, you know, it was um, a good good for me to get the rounds in, you know. So it was well, well done, dude. Why do you think people were telling you not to fight on the inside? Because my height. You know, especially when somebody like uh, Scott Sigmund is um, a lot lighter than me. You know, sometimes you're taking un unwanted punches, even though he, I don't think he hit me, you know, but a couple times. But um, it's chances of taking shots that you don't have to take. Did you feel physically good in that fight? It's been a while since you've gotten some good yeah. rounds. I fought very physically um, good in that fight. I felt strong. Um, again, my cardio, my conditioning. Um, seventh round, I was still, you know, throwing a lot of punches with um, power. Um, so I, I felt really good, you know, overall, just everything with this fight. Mentally, I felt good, you know, I was enjoying it. So, you know, it was a good night. How has working out of this gym, Garcia Box Academy, and with Robert helped you? He's helped me on a lot of things, you know, even um, with this last fight, he was telling me, you know, to stay, not to stay on the inside so much, go suffocate, and um, we work on things here a lot, you know, it's not one thing or, you know, he won't tell me one time, and it's over with, you know, he works on it. And then when we hit the pads, we work on it over and over and over. And I, I think that's when you get into the repetition of, of doing these things, you pick up the habit of doing them. Um, even in that fight, how I was doing, going to the body with my left hand and coming back upstairs with hooks, you know, and left uppercuts and right uppercuts. You know, before I would throw, throw an uppercut and I was pretty stiff. You know, he got me bending my legs. So there's been a lot of good things. How much have you seen yourself improve in these last couple of fights since you've rededicated yourself and since working with Robert? I thought I have proved a lot, you know, and I think another big one is um, I showed how, how good of a left hand I have. Um, people always just say, you look at, watch out for the right hand on Pavlik. Um, you know, we work on it here all the time. That's another thing, you know, um, will make me throw hooks, you know, to the body, to the head, jabs, and we'll do that for five or six rounds on the pads, you know, and um, I, again, it gets you in a habit, and those are the things that I'm learning that I have never done before. How confident are you using that left hand now? It's something you and Robert have been working yeah, on. Yeah, I'm very confident. Um, you know, and I've always had a good left hand, but I kind of abandoned it, you know, because of the right hand. Um, but it's, it's a big weapon, you know. Now you got to make somebody think, okay, you know, I can't watch the right hand now. Now I got to watch the left hand too, so it's pretty good. Now in this next fight, you're gonna have maybe a month to prepare. Yeah. Uh, take me through when you got that phone call and you found out that you were gonna get this next fight and, and uh, did you hesitate or think twice? No, I, I didn't. Um, yeah, you know, uh, with the family and everybody, everybody being back home, that's one thing, but you know, it was such a short notice and it's an opportunity that I can't pass up. You know, um, to be back on HBO again and, and uh, being on, on, that, on that network and fighting and keeping active is a, is a good thing, you know? So um, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So you're, you're thinking after this last fight against Sigmund that, what, you're going to go home for, for a few weeks and, and get to relax? I, I, I thought, you know, I'd be able to stay home for a month. Um, and instead, we're home for a week and a half. So, uh, but again, that's part of the, the game. And, um, you know, I go show my dedication, commitment to, um, you know, getting back on, get my career back on track. And uh, I'm excited. I really am. This opportunity for you, an opportunity for you to get back on HBO. Yes. And we talked a little bit about, you know, your comeback and how you were going to kind of ease into it. Yeah. Next thing you know, your first fight back in Texas, they put you on TV Azteca. Yeah. And then you fight in Vegas and ESPN Friday Night Fights yes. puts you on a, a main event, which usually yeah. they just put prospects. And now here you are uh, with this amazing opportunity to, mm -hmm. to co-headline a card on HBO. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel good, you know. Um, it makes me feel like I've, I would have accomplished a lot in my career to get that opportunity again. Um, and it's great to be back on, on a big stage, you know, and um, on HBO and, and stations like that. And it's, uh, it is crazy, you know. We went from one to the next and then boom, we're, we're here now. So it's a good time and it's also an opportunity for me to really make some noise again. What does it mean to you to show that your hard work and your rededication to the sport has made people want to watch Kelly Pavlik fight it, again? It, it, makes it makes it feel good that people want to see me fight again um, because, of, because of the hard work, you know. And, and again, going back on it, I showed that, you know, I could have stayed home for a month and I could have easily said, no, I'll just take my time, 
you know, take this, not take this fight and rest, you know. But I think I'm showing that I'm serious about this, and, and um, when people, people see me fight, I always give 110%. I make it exciting fights. So I, it's a pretty big opportunity right now. Why are you so hungry right now at this point in your career when some people could have said, ah, you could have to hung it up and just been happy with, with yeah. what you've done? Because it's a personal goal that I still have. You know, um, I got this far. You know, I, I did have a world title for three years, but I still want to go out and show people that I can do it again, you know, and that um, it's, I don't, that's a very good question, but that, that's the main thing, show my fans also, you know, the critics, the fans, that I, I belong back where, you know, I was. At what point would you be able to say, this is where I want to be, or this is what I'm happy? What is it that you want to still accomplish? I want to accomplish, you know, win another world title. And, and even at 68, that would be even better because now I'm a two-weight division uh, world champion. You know, two-weight classes, I had middleweight, now I'm super middleweight. Um, it would be a great opportunity to, to win another world title, uh, I, I, or a great chance, especially at super middleweight. So are you comfortable at 168? Is that where, you know, you see your career continuing at that weight division? There's a lot of talent there, and then come yeah. maybe at 160, it might somebody at a catch weight, 165? 160, um, it's not a, it's not totally out the equation, but I just know how hard it is to make that weight and what I had to go through, even with the Martinez fight, um, to make 160. 168 right now seems more realistic, you know, for my career. But uh, that's a good point with the catch weight too, because you know, I know Chavez eventually is going to have to go up. You know, he has a hard time making 160, um, and there's so much talent up at 168. So I mean, you, you could get a lot of fights at, with catch weights. This talent and. The, the wealth of talent around your weight has to also be something that's motivating for you, especially when we talked earlier about watching Chavez fight, watching a Martinez. That has to, to make you hungry as well. It, it does make you hungry, and it makes me know that there's, it's so loaded that, I mean, you could fight any one of them, you know, and there's opportunity that you're going to get that big fight again. Uh, that's the good thing, too, you know, about being at 168. Um, I don't have to struggle to make 160, and, and there's a lot more opportunities at 168. You know, right now you got Chavez and you got Martinez mainly at 160. So I think 68 is a good, a good place to camp. You talked about going home to see your family. You've changed your whole life to move out here to Oxnard, to be away from your wife, to be away from your kids. Has it all been worth it so far? So far, yes, it has. You know, it, it has been worth it. Um, I'm getting to work, and, and there will be a time where they come out. You know, this fight, this camp is so short, you know, there was no real reason to have them come out. But, um, you know, next fight camp, I'll have a bigger place. They'll um, be able to come out with me. Um, and this fight was so short notice, but they're still going to probably come out. And, um, but, you know, it's again, it's something that I have to do. And uh, it's hard. That's the hardest part is having all these kids. But, um, you know, it's going to be in the future. Words. Right. I would have to imagine that what you're showing them right now through your dedication and through your perseverance is providing lifelong lessons for your kids. Mm -hmm. Even though you can't be there physically as much as you would like to, you're planting that seed and you're laying that foundation for them. Yes. And, you know, they're going to realize, too, that, you know, with accomplishments and the things that, and reasons why I've done it. You know, I didn't, I went out there for, as a job, you know, and um, it's a great job for me. I love my job, but... That's what you know. I think it's going to show them. And you keep fighting on HBO and national TV. That they'll see you more than no, maybe you thought. Yeah. No, they still got some time though. Uh, a little too young still to watch. But you know, my daughter's at the age she knows. Um, she knows exactly what, what I do. And uh, my son will, will be here in a couple of years. Will Rosinski, the guy that you're that you're fighting, has half the fights that you have, but is a tough kid. And and for him, if he wins. He sees it as making a name for himself, and if you beat him, it was what you're supposed to do. What are your thoughts on yeah, fighting this? Yeah, like this fight's a dangerous fight, you know, for um, both of us. You know, he's a, a prospect. Um, yeah, I do have the experience over him, but uh, you know, I know he's coming to fight. You know, he's a good fighter. He just fought. He's in good shape. But uh, you know, I think with our training and, and um, the way I've been feeling, that it's going to be a better night for for me than the last one. You know, and. Um, but, you know, Rosinski has, yeah, does have an opportunity right now. He has a, this is a shot right here. Are you concerned at all with just having fought a few days ago and now having this fight um, probably exactly a month since your last fight? No, I have, I'm not worried due to the fact that, you know, I didn't get banged up in a fight. You know, I didn't hurt my hands. I didn't hurt anything. And um, there's no cuts or anything like that. So um, I'm still healthy, you know, ready to go. There's uh, 
no problem. So 